students welcome back now we are going to discuss about the appendicular skeletal complexes in that the first one is the shoulder complex in the shoulder complex now we are going to see the introduction of the shoulder complex the upper limbs of the human body constitute slightly less than 10% of the bo total body weight that small segment of the body mass however contains one principal physical feature which differs humans from the rest of the animals that is human hand the highly complicated gross and skilled functions performed by the hand or dependent on the shoulder complex although the shoulder complex is a mobile component but it also provides a strong base for the remaining segments of the upper limb okay and this shoulder complex is composed of three bones one is clavicle scapula and the humerus and these bones join forms a joints forms the joints and forms an functional entity and forms a functional entity these joints are very complicated complicately designed and this combinations of three joints which links the upper extremity to the thorax so the shoulder complex is composed of three bones one is clavicle scapula and the humerus and these joints are interlinked in between them and forms a functional entity and these joints are very complicatedly designed and this combinations of three joints that links the upper limb to the thorax and these components that is the clavicle scapula and the humerus constitutes one half of the weight of the entire upper limb entire upper limb so if you take only the upper limbs upper limbs on both sides of the upper limbs forms 10% of total body weight whereas the components of the shoulder forms the components of the shoulder forms one half of the weight of the entire upper limb okay and coming to the articular structures of this uh, shoulder complex are mainly designed or primarily designed for mobility which allowing humans to move and position the hand through a wide range of space through a wide range of space so if any problem in the shoulder joint or any problem in the shoulder complex we can able to move the hand but we can't uh, do a wide range of uh, movements with the help of hand so the remaining segments of the upper limb mainly depends upon the shoulder complex okay the glenohumeral joints here the glenohumeral joints in the shoulder complex which forms a links between the humerus and the scapula has greater mobility than any other of the joint than any other of the joint so if you uh, any other of the joint in the body so this glenohumeral joint has a greater mobility okay and then this shoulder complex this shoulder complex is 
connected to the axial skeleton this shoulder complex is connected to the axial skeleton by a single anatomic joint that is called as sternoclavicular joint so the shoulder complex is connected to the axial skeleton by a single anatomic joint by a single anatomic joint what do you mean by anatomic joint it has a connection between the two bones okay so this sternoclavicular joint connects the upper extremity to the axial skeleton okay so this is the only joint which gives attachment and also this is the only bony components which gives support to the entire upper limb okay but this is not enough this is not enough to give stability for the entire upper limb as a result the muscle forces as a result the muscle forces that serves as primary mechanism for securing this shoulder girdle to the thorax for securing the shoulder girdle to the thorax and providing and providing stable base of support for upper extremity movements so the muscular forces which helps in securing the stability of the shoulder girdle on the thorax and also it provides a stable base the muscular forces forms a stable base of support for all the upper extremity movements okay and the contradictory so this is uh, mainly designed for mobility <clears throat> this is mainly designed for mobility at the same time stability is also required at the same time stability is also required what kind of stability it is requiring so this complex requires both the um, static stabilization as well as the dynamic stabilization okay so the contradictory mobility stability contradictory mobility and stability requirements necessitate the dynamic stability so the dynamic stability is very very important for this shoulder complex and this shoulder complex is also designed based upon the concept of dynamic stability so this shoulder complex forms a classic example for the concept of dynamic stability okay in that essence dynamic stability exist dynamic stability exist in all the joints dynamic stability exists when a moving segment or a set of segments moving segments or set of segments is limited okay is limited very little or some other uh, forces which limits heavily so what are those things now we will see so the dynamic stability exists when a moving segment moving segment or a set of segments is limited very little is limited very little by passive forces by passive forces such as articular surface configuration so this anatomic structure will limit the movement that means it will give somewhat stability and also capsule which is surrounding the joints capsules which are surrounding the joints and also the ligaments which give support to the joints all these things will have 
little effect on dynamic stability but in dynamic stability the active forces which are generated in the muscles will have high effect on dynamic stability of the shoulder complex that means uh, this structures will have little effect whereas the muscular forces which are created inside the muscles actively that will helps in dynamic stability so the although the muscles help in mobility as well as some of the muscles helps in stabilization so the dynamic stability is mainly controlled or mainly helped by this active forces which are created inside the muscles and um, limited stability dynamic stability is getting from the passive forces or such as articular surface configuration capsules and ligaments okay and this dynamic stabilization results in wide range of mobility for the shoulder complex and provides adequate stability when the complex is functioning normally so this dynamic stabilization helps in a wide range of mobility in the shoulder complex and also provides adequate stability when the complex is functioning normally and however this competing mobility and stability demands on the shoulder girdle and the complicated structural and functional designs of the shoulder complex make this complex susceptible to dysfunction and instability so the structural any change in the structure and uh, any change in the uh, functional that means uh, the muscular any changes in the um, uh, muscles or uh, muscle function will alter the functions of the shoulder complex which leads to dysfunction and instability okay because this is a very mobile joint it is a highly mobile joint so which has a wide range of which has a wide range of movements and also during such kind of movements it is also having uh, uh, stability also so any changes in the structure as well as any changes in the stabilizing factors will leads to dysfunction and instability of the joint okay so this is about the introduction of the shoulder complex and based upon all these things so the shoulder complex joints and the components how they are working individually and how they are working together to maintain uh, mobility as well as the stability during static times and also during in the dynamic times how these things are happening during uh, movements of the shoulder complex that thing we are going to study in this chapter okay before studying those biomechanical aspects you have to know the components of the shoulder comp complex we have seen that the osseous components that is um, clavicle scapula and the humerus now now we are going to see the components of the shoulder complex all these three bones all these three bones forms 
the joints among themselves and also it will uh, join with the axial skeleton through the sternoclavicular joint this is the only joint which attaches the upper limb to the thorax okay and these segments are responsible these segments are responsible for movement of hand through space okay and the three segments are controlled by these three segments are controlled by four interdependent linkages <clears throat> these three segments are controlled by four interdependent linkages okay that linkages we are going to see now so one is so this sternum is forming a linkage with the manubrium sterni forming the sternoclavicular joint and this acromion forms a linkage with uh, this uh, clavicle the lateral end of the clavicle forms a linkage with the acromion process of the scapula forming acromioclavicular joint and whereas the glenoid fossa or the glenoid cavity of the scapula forms a linkage with the head of the humerus forming glenohumeral joints these three joints are anatomical as well as the functional joints in the shoulder complex whereas another linkage which is present that is called as scapulo thoracic joint scapulo thoracic joint this scapulo thoracic joint uh, normally we are not mentioned it as a joint uh, when we are studied in anatomy in the first year but because of its articulations over the thorax makes it a joint although it does not have the characteristics of a fibrous cartilaginous or a synovial joint but the scapula motions on the thorax scapula motions or movement on the thorax forming a functional joint forming a functional joint when the scapula moves on the thorax so this movement of the scapula taking place along with the sternoclavicular movements or acromioclavicular movements or combined motions of sternoclavicular and acromioclavicular joint causes motions of the scapula on the thorax so this scapulothoracic joint is not an anatomical joint but it is a functional joint and additional functional joint along with the scapulothoracic joint is also present that is called as subacromial joint what you call subacromial joint normally we have call this space as subacromial space subacromial space when we have studied in the shoulder joint that is the glenohumeral joint here we have studied it as a space rather than a joint this but in this chapter we are considering this subacromial space as a subacromial joint which is also a functional joint this functional joint is formed by the movement of the head movement of the head of humerus below the coracoacromial arch below the coracoacromial arch so although the movement in this functional joint plays an important role in shoulder function as well as dysfunction so this space is referred or considered as a component of glenohumeral joint rather than a separate joint 
but in this chapter we are considering the space also a functional joint that is called as subacromial joint now totally we are having five components of the shoulder complex one is the sternoclavicular joint acromioclavicular joint and the glenohumeral joint these three joints are anatomical as well as the functional joints whereas another linkage that is the scapulothoracic joint scapulothoracic joint so th this is a functional joint whereas another joint that is the subacromial space is uh, considered as subacromial joint these two are functional joints so the shoulder complex finally it consists of five joints out of five joints three are anatomical as well as functional joints and the two joints are only functional joints so the anatomical as well as the functional joints are sternoclavicular acromioclavicular glenohumeral and the only functional joints are scapulothoracic and subacromial joints okay the joints that compose the shoulder complex can can in combination with the trunk in combination with the trunk motion contributes as much as 180 degrees of as much as 180 degrees of elevation to the upper extremity elevation of the upper extremity here in this chapter wherever you get this elevation don't uh, think that the elevation movements of this shoulder girdle elevation and depression not that movement here here elevation of the upper extremity refers to the combination of scapular clavicular and the humeral motions that occur when the arm is raised when the arm is raised either forward direction so forward means flexion of the flexion of the shoulder joint so flexion of the shoulder joint what you are uh, how you are moving the arm we are moving the arm towards upwards that means up the arm is moving upwards so it is the arm is elevating that means it is raised the arm is raised during flexion in the sagittal plane that is in front when that comes under elevation that is flexion of the shoulder joint comes under elevation and also the movement of the arm to the side so by the side that is in the coronal plane we are also elevating the arm on the sideways we are raising the arm on the sideways that is called abduction of the shoulder joint so here elevation of the upper extremity refers to flexion as well as the abduction of the shoulder joint keep it in mind okay it may be the difference in planes it may be difference in planes so the flexion in the forward side that means when the arm raised in front of our body then it is the flexion of the shoulder joint which is taking place in sagittal plane and also in the next condition the second condition we are raising the arm we are moving this arm away from the body we are moving the arm away from the body so that uh, movement is taking place in the coronal plane that is the abduction of the shoulder joint so we are going to consider these two movements as elevation of the upper extremity in this chapter okay now motions of the scapula on the thorax normally contributes so the motion of the scapula motion of the scapula on the thorax normally contributes one third of the total shoulder complex movements 
so the movement of the scapula on the thorax forms one third of the total shoulder complex movements and the remaining two third of the shoulder complex movements is done by the glenohumeral joints okay although the integrated function of all the three joints is of primary interest all the three joints integrated function of all the three joints is of primary interest and each articulation and the components of the shoulder complex must be known thoroughly and also you have to examine individually whenever there is a problem and also you have to check the integrated dynamic function and you have to study the integrated dynamic function then only you can um, appreciate the integrated dynamic function of the shoulder complex this is uh, very much useful uh, in understanding the shoulder complex movements as well as in the assessment and any diagnosis of any problem in the shoulder joint okay this is about the introduction and the components of the shoulder complex in the next session we are going to see the individual joints individual components of the shoulder complex that is the sternoclavicular acromioclavicular glenohumeral scapulothoracic as well as the subacromial joint in the next sessions thank you